thanks for coming today. A couple of just comments about last week's game. Uh, I don't have champions. We just had a bunch of recruiting meetings yesterday, so I'll get them later today. Um, tough loss against a very good team. Just got to move forward. And uh, first one we've had during the regular season, so there's no victory meal for our players. And um, uh, I can tell they're hurting. So we get to hurt for a – we'll give them till uh, the rest of the day today. Then the coaching staff and players got to move forward and try to get our second win. So I'll answer any questions for you. Yeah, just a little experience here, and we just got a you know very unique style of defense. First time I've seen uh, seen that. Uh, it was completely, you know, we hours upon hours of game planning, including in the spring, we started looking at Virginia Tech, and they did, I mean just completely played bare zero, which was a, you know a high risk defense, but obviously it worked. They're coaching that staff and the good players. We just got to hit. I think we hit four big plays, had a couple PIs and a couple plays in option football, and it still didn't get him out of it. We just had to make more of them. And uh, we will as we continue to grow up. Is that the only area that. Well, no, there's, like the there's plenty of areas that, uh, you know, offense, defense, kicking game. Uh, that was a really good team we played, and I think we're a really good team. And um, a play here, a play there, a field goal here, a field goal there, and uh, a stop, you know. Could go on and on and on, and that's what's you know frustrating. Not taking anything away from Virginia Tech, but a few good plays, and you know it's a different outcome. And a great stadium, great great night. So we just got to rebound and move forward. Every everything we are shooting for is playing for championships in November, and that's still right at our disposal. Uh, it's not. I mean, we got a heck of a long way to go. But you put your heart and your mind in the, that of a 19-year-old. Everything's right still there. So and I see that in their look. They're they're all hurting. And uh, they'll take our lead and take my lead, and I'm still hurting. So we'll be ready by tonight, get it out of our system, and go. Brent Romano, as you analyzed the film, Coach, offensively, what were you most disappointed with? Oh, oh just not making the, you know, it was one-on-one -on -one coverage. And I thought we've improved at wide receiver, and we just didn't get open enough. And when we did, we didn't either protection flaw. I mean, it was uh, – uh, there was going to be no run. They made a decision to take away the tailbacks. And there was nine guys within six yards of the line of scrimmage. And um, you have to make someone pay a price and come up with some of those catches. You know, Dontre made a couple, you know, one ridiculous catch. We just got you have to do that. And we have to execute, get the ball to them, and protect. So one thing is just the execution of the, you know, when they're going to play zero coverage, you got to make those shots. We haven't had a lot of that. Digesting the loss after the game is tough at first, but how do you approach when you have such a huge recruiting, excuse me, recruiting weekend when you go in there? You know, what do you say to the kids that are there in the room? How is it different from the way you? Approach? It is tough. Um, that's a very good question. That's you know, you don't sleep much. You get up in the morning and you get a text saying, "Okay, breakfast at 9:30," and you got meetings from 9:30 until about 6:30 at night, straight through with recruits. That's what I did yesterday, and you gotta put the smile on your face and. Go attack them. The, the best thing going was the environment. Everyone saw it. I think they also saw opportunities to, to help our football team. And so um, that is a, it's a, it's a grinder. It's much better when you're popping around and when you win. And the demeanor of everyone's, you know, because our players are hurting too. And the campus was hurting. And But, you know, the feedback's been very good. Do you worry about that? Do you worry that? Yeah. I mean, like, do, how, do I worry it? about that? No, no, I mean, Tim, explain <laughs> to him. I worry about everything. Uh, yes. That was a big one for you. What's that? That was a big weekend. So, did you like yeah. to approach it the night of differently, or the night of? Like, I don't know if you converse them after the game's over. Like, how do you approach it differently in a situation like this? And you would when you don't win, yeah. or no? We always talk about the high risk. I mean, when I was at Florida, same thing. You know, do you really want to schedule that? All those official visits. Uh, just there's such a, a great atmosphere in our stadium. You know, we risked it last year against uh, Wisconsin and Penn State, the year before against Nebraska, and those turned out the wrong way. I, I think it's so important to just witness. I mean, that was awesome, the crowd. And, you know, I had my headsets on, but I've had comments that's the loudest they've ever heard any stadium. So, and I want to thank our st uh, fans for that. Our students were outstanding, and they, you know, it was great. We just got to play better.
But uh, to answer your question, I don't want to go off. Uh, to answer your question, yeah, you are concerned about it, but there's so much to sell here, that's the great time to bring them in. Front row left, Rusty. Like any segment of college football fans, there's part of people out there follow the team that when you guys are winning, nobody can beat us, we're invincible, and then when you lose, they're like, oh, we're terrible, the season's lost. Do you have to get any more insular or kind of circle the wagons with the players just to say, look, everything out there, that's immaterial. What we're just dealing with here is right in front of us. Sure. Um, you have to do that when you win as well. Well, there, there's, I always make the comments, you love to just go move them off to a desert island somewhere and coach your team and not worry about social media, uncles and third uncles. First uncles are okay, third uncles are bad. Uh, they're the ones that, with opinions that have no clue what they're talking about. First uncles are right. Uh, but yeah, the, those are all concerns and that's the, one of the cool things about coaching 18, 19, 20-year-olds, that, that's, that's a challenge that I actually enjoy. And, and uh, if you have a good relation with it, with the player, which our coaching staff does, it's, it's aware. You just make them aware and have a good conversation about it and move forward. Back row left, Rob. Urban, do you, uh, what's the offensive identity you want to create? Uh, and is it, is it happening? Because it seems like there's a little bit Well, we had two weeks, very unique. Uh, uh, we were just talking about that. We haven't run a base offense, so set yet really against Navy it was all the uh, three four uh, you know back and forth game and that's not really you know we haven't faced a four three defense yet and that's traditional what you're going to see for most of the year and that's really what most of our baseball offense is premised on is four three defense we haven't zero snaps of four three defense think about it we're two games into it so uh, our offense identity would be last year with a little more with uh, more balance and throwing the ball would, is what who we'd like to be, and that's kind of what we're built for schematically. You know, we don't have a Carlos High, but we've got some pretty good backs. Probably we've got more a little, little more perimeter run game than we've had in the past. But it wasn't there yet because they're, they were not going to give it to us in their style of defense. Does that answer your question? Yeah, but I got a follow up that's not related. That's okay. When you were at BG, you're, you're playing Kent State. Obviously, when you're in that situation, you're not thinking you're you're, you're learning for something that's to come, another job, but Looking back, did, how did BG set the table for you as a coach? Oh, I, it was a – first of all, I love Bowling Green. We uh, took a team that was really struggling, and, and our first game, go beat Missouri. I mean, one of the darndest things you've ever seen. It was one of those moments, like, I can't believe that just happened. And then uh, I think our record against BCS schools was 4-0 or 5-0, I mean, which is remarkable for the group of players. And I still am very close to a lot of them. Um, I think it just sets its uh, how to develop a staff. <clears throat> you try things that you know. That if you did here, it'd be, you know, on every front page of the paper. And I'm glad there weren't. You know, we didn't have the exposure because uh, there's a lot of mistakes made by yours truly and our coaching staff and mistakes that were all for the you know, you're trying this, trying this, trying this. And so it's a, a great opportunity to go, in, especially in that conference because you recruit all the same player. That's why I love the MAC conference. You can march out most in the in, that team comes out of the locker room and they all look alike. They're all usually the, the team with a quarterback wins that conference. And there's been some phenomenal quarterbacks come out of the MAC conference. Really good players too, but they just don't have the depth. But it's a really good coaching league because for the most part, they're all about the same talent wise. Front row, Bill. As disappointing as it was, as upset as you were, is there a part of you as a coach who could see the long view that might think this could be a blessing in disguise if we handle this? That'll stuff? show up tomorrow. No, not yet. It'll show up sometime tomorrow when you start looking at the positives. And and uh, I did. I saw a quarterback fight like uh, I got hit. I got hit too much. And they were uh, we call green dog, and they were blitzing the back. And I mean, it was they did a nice job. But I, I saw there are some positives. Uh, but we're still in that hurting mode about. You know, you just one of the pain of regret is phenomenal. And there's so much regret still about some things we could have did better to win that game. Uh, but there are plenty of positives, and we'll address those in great detail tomorrow. And, and the defense, it was supposed to be this new look, very aggressive defense. At times it was, at times it didn't look like it. Could you assess the defense performance? Average. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, we didn't pressure as much. We settled down. The first two drives are bad. Then we settled down and played some really good defense for about two and a half quarters. We had one bad drive in the second half, but for the most part, uh, very pleased with the you know. But it, you know, I want to get to the point at Ohio State uh, where it's shut down, locked down defense, and 
let's keep it to 10 points and you know and I think we can make that happen as we continue to grow this year there's still some new blood out there playing and uh, there were too far too many when you meet with our defense coaches there were far too many mental mistakes effort was not an issue but just for example you, you have a, it's going to be a sack for a safety in our defensive end loses contain and the quarterback scrambles out and they complete a pass we had a couple third down, you know, didn't get them off the field and third downs in the first half. But for for a good three, two and a half plus quarters, it was very good defense. Uh, but that's it's not four quarters of great defense. I like the I like the direction we're going. Uh, we just need to get there real fast. Front row left, Doug. Urban, even with the defense that Virginia Tech was playing, you guys have talked about the speed you had on offense. Did you guys do enough in trying to get the ball to Curtis or Dontre or Jalen and those guys? No. No, we did not. No, they kind of took that all away from us. It was forced into a one-on-one. Nine guys were at the line of scrimmage, so uh, they're not quite ready. Dontre, yeah, I think Dontre we did. Not in the run game. There was, there was just, we tried a couple of times, and there's just everyone's right there. So it was going to be a throw down the field type game. And Dontre made a, I know, one play um, downfield. But to answer your question, we did not get to utilize that speed. And until you scare people off you, you won't get to. I mean, that's the first time I've seen that kind of defense and maybe my coaching career where it was I mean they were all six yards the start of the game and I remember on the headsets I was looking and I said wow I've never seen that see them do that. that's why the second play of the game we took a shot down the field and almost got it and then we had a couple PIs and but it, it was forced into a one-on-one -on -one game is I know every team is different why wouldn't every defense that you guys face look at that and say let's try they that felt out. good about I'm, I'm, I don't want to speak for them but after watching the films you know, a bunch of times it's they felt their matchups at corner were better and they had a freshman quarterback and new offensive line and before we get the play started we're going to be in the backfield and pretty, pretty gutsy but you know I don't know if you do that against last year's team you'd have to ask their coach I don't know that uh, but you have you know a veteran offensive line coming back and and uh, a veteran quarterback I'm not saying we would have, the outcome would have different. I'm not saying that, but I think they, uh, the Virginia Tech coaching staff made a, a gutsy decision and, and it really did a nice job. But with having a young quarterback and a young line right now, do you think you guys are going to have to prove something yes. on the field or other defenses will try that same idea? I don't know if people have the personnel. I, I know one of them does. Uh, the team that won the Big Ten last year does. Uh, I don't know if that, that's, that's risky stuff. Now, you hit a couple of those, you know, you get a mismatch somewhere and, um, you know, they replaced that one corner in the third quarter when we hit a couple plays on them, and the other guy came in is pretty good too. So that's, and you can't really do that. You know, the thing that, I, I, once again down the road because I'm friends with their coach, we play them next year, so it'll be a while. But I bet that was that wasn't something you put on on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. That's been going on for a while. Front row middle, Todd. Urban, even as much as you guys struggled offensively, it was 21-21. I think they took a 28-21 lead. You guys had 14 offensive plays. Six sacks, two picks. After that. After that. What did they do differently? Was it was it a mentality that they just closed better than you guys did? Yeah. I, I, we didn't do anything differently. Uh, that's a tough stat. I didn't notice that one. Yeah, it's last 14 plays, what? Last 14 plays, six sacks and wow. two picks. Wow. Up until it's 35-21, a couple seconds left then. Yeah. Yeah, we, they just close better, and that's something we need to continue to address and play better. And then with the, you keep mentioning the one-on-ones. Did the receivers most of the time lose battles, or was it a combination? Of combination of both. You know, we won some battles, and then there was pressure. You just don't have much time. And I think you know that's the one thing about game planning. And you know, you sink your teeth in the Navy, and that's you know another advantage. We had a team that we had to go. You know, I'm not disrespecting William and Mary, but you can tell what they worked on was it was completely different so I mean if, if we knew that was coming you're much more prepared to, and, and you're trying to make sideline adjustments with some young players and it's really hard so uh, we just got to be you know we just got to do from now on I mean if you don't want to act like there's hindsight you just got to be prepared to make some of those shots down the field you have to complete it's it's turned into a complete one-on-one -on -one game when you do that yeah, Irvin, you talked about this last week. You would like to see a couple of those guys, like like you were just talking about a minute ago, step up and make some plays, establish themselves. Uh, who do you think still has that capability maybe in the next I'm few I'm not weeks? giving up on Corey Smith. You know, he dropped a touchdown pass. I might have changed the game. And uh, I met with him today, and he's a guy that uh, 
has a lot of potential. And basically, you look at his career, and there's a word next to him saying potential. Not a lot of uh, statistics or commanded respect, but he's got a lot of potential. Yeah. But um, the way he's changed as a human being, as a, as a football player, we're not giving up on him. I thought Mike Thomas had a career day. For, you know, he's not played very well. He played very well in that game. I think we got it. You know, Devin Smith played okay. We got a, but he was open a few times, just couldn't get it to him. Evan Spencer's got to make a couple plays. So it's I, I'm disappointed, but I'm not lost. Uh, uh, who we can still become, and there's a long time left to go. And, and in that regard, offensive line, what you know? Because obviously there were times when they blocked them, and times when they didn't. And, and said, yeah, but the offensive line, a lot of the pressures you saw were free guys, yeah. and that's because of the add-on blitzes. So I, I think the offensive line was kind of, you know, we'd block them in a run game, and there'd be an extra guy right there. That was not, it's not a, I, I still, I'm concerned about our offense line, but Saturday was not a fair assessment. We have to hit one-on-one -on -one plays in those kind of situations. Front row right, last couple questions. Awesome. <coughs> Jordan, I'm sure in some respect you thought there'd be some growing pain when you replaced the offensive line, Carlos, Billy, et cetera, on offense. Has the challenge been greater than you anticipated or not really? Well, a little bit greater. You know, I think this one we got exposed a little bit. You know, I, I was hoping they'd, Played our traditional 4-3 defense, man free is kind of what we prepared for, and that's not what they gave us. So we were exposed a little bit. Um, you know, once again, it, it's it's amazing how fragile this game is. You catch that touchdown pass, you, you know, I know what if if and all that other stuff, but you you make a couple plays, that's a different ball game. So and now we're all sitting here, but that's the fine line of how fragile this whole thing is. So it is. A, I, we are. I thought we would be a little further ahead. We were exposed in this game. The skill was. But the skill is going to rebound, it, and we're going to coach them as hard as we have, and they have to rebound. And final question, Steve. Yeah, Coach, uh, no one's really brought up JT. Um, his situation, uh, he took a little bit of a physical beating and mentally, maybe just kind of the guys around him not holding up their end of the bargain to support him. Have you talked to him since the game, and where's his mindset, and how resilient is he after a game like that? He's uh, probably, that's his best. You know, he's, uh, I, I don't. I think he missed his whole senior year, if I remember right, with an ACL. Half of it. Half of it. Uh, so he hasn't played a lot of football, and it took him a while to get back and healthy. He wasn't healthy when he first got here. Uh, we recruited him because of, first of all, his ability level. He, he all can see, he can throw, and he runs well enough. But the real, uh, which is probably as important as anything, is the character and the maturity of what kind of human being he is. And so he'll rebound. I have all the confidence in the world. So does our, our offensive staff. So that, that's his strength. And so we'll, you'll watch a young man that's going to really rebound this weekend.